Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, and I'll be hosting tonight's show. Satellite imagery uh, showing basically high pressure over the interior due to the rotation clockwise flow around the high there, carrying a little bit of moisture here, mostly in the form of clouds up across the, well, the eastern Arctic coast, but otherwise clear skies here from the uh, southeast coast eastward across south central Alaska, and just some variable stuff up in the interior there with uh, nice conditions all the way out into the Bering Sea here. St. Paul under the cloud shield, extending back down across the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern Aleutians and storm system down to the south there and a front just to the south of the Aleutians, mostly affecting the Adak Atka area with some uh, precipitation and the gale force winds today. And we've got this area of moisture sliding up uh, in across the Permalos today with some uh, rainfall quite light extending back down toward an Alaska and say Falls Pass. And you can see how the movement here is from southeast to northwest. So the front out in this area really uh, just pulling back to the west there and then this next system pulling up to the south really isn't going to come that much farther north. On the uh, surface analysis today, high pressure, uh, one center south of Kodiak Island, a couple up here to the north and northwest, and the uh, one over the Arctic there, that's uh, continuing the winds, gale force winds across uh, uh, Lynn Canal and keeping it breezy across the remainder of the panhandle there as well as cool, dry with uh, a lot of sunshine this afternoon. That same pattern back along the North Gulf Coast, the dry pattern with some sunshine, except not nearly as much wind there where it did uh, blow. Uh, temperatures rose up uh, to near 50 degrees today, say like at Whittier. Otherwise, uh, cooler conditions than that up across uh, the Susitna Valley, Cook Inlet areas, and on into the interior. And the forecast for tonight, no change, mostly clear skies. There will be some areas of low clouds and fog developing, uh, like Kinnick Arm possibly, in and around Anchorage, out along Cook Inlet, and hit and miss areas over the interior as well due to the light winds. That won't be a problem here across the Panhandle with uh, gusty winds forecast to continue for the next, uh, well, tonight, tomorrow, and through Monday there. Uh, see a tighter gradient down over the southern areas. That just means uh, mostly clear skies or just clear skies with gusty winds. Kind of a variation in the overnight lows depending on where it's windy. Otherwise, uh, storminess down stays down to the south there, uh, barely even affecting the Queen Charlotte Islands. A weak low developing here in the Gulf of Alaska. That should start to increase the clouds in the Gulf, but uh, it doesn't look like anything. Definitely not tonight. There won't be any clouds up to Cordova, maybe even Kodiak Island. And then weak offshore flow will keep VFR conditions and the clouds off to the west here, even from St. Lawrence Island to the west of Nunavak Island. Then you start picking up the clouds around the Pribilofs and then the rain shield associated with that front, uh, which isn't moving too much. Actually, that low sliding northwestward there, holding this front in place. Southeast winds uh, 20 to 40 knots in the marine areas there from the eastern Aleutians back out to the west or become a little more easterly. Otherwise, uh, dry and lighter winds, again, as you head northward there into the Bering Strait. And there is an upper level low up here, reflected by that 1,027 millibar surface low. that will uh, keep most of the moisture off the coast tonight, but uh, tomorrow that's going to start dropping south. Um, really, it shows up much better in the upper air than it does at the surface here, although kind of a weak trough. So tomorrow, look for more clouds and a better chance of some light snow and fog there along the western Arctic coast and just maybe a couple of flurries there on the east side. But winds remain light, light winds, no change that you'll notice at all here over interior Alaska for tomorrow from what you saw today. Could be just some uh, variable clouds passing through. Otherwise, 
Gulf of Alaska, about the only thing going on is this low center, pretty weak, very weak, and that's just going to cause the clouds to increase, and if any shower activity develops with that, it will stay off the coast there. I think uh, Kodiak will stay out of the clouds through tomorrow, and uh, southeast coast here probably won't see any clouds at all. I probably have extended too far to the east. Uh, offshore flow will keep that from happening, so another mostly sunny day tomorrow. With gusty winds, the entire stretch of the coastline right on down to Dixon entrance. And this uh, front out here, gale force winds now a little farther to the east, uh, diminishing somewhat back to the west there, but uh, definitely right over Adak and Atka as that low center continues to just kind of slide back to the west. And that leaves the uh, Bering Sea in north to northeast to easterly and eventually southeasterly wind flow. So we're looking pretty good here with the uh, mostly clear skies from St. Lawrence Island. Could see 25 knot winds out of the north tomorrow with this uh, disturbance starting to come down, but that won't be the case. Light offshore breezes there along the southwest coast. And then, as I mentioned, the flurries up along the Arctic coast. So that upper system I talked about is gonna drop southward tomorrow night. And by Monday, we'll be about in this position here. And so that's gonna increase the clouds. Definitely will increase the clouds here from the uh, southern Seward Peninsula across Norton Sound into the Yukon and Cusquam Delta areas, the best chance of some light snow developing here from, oh, say St. Michael and uh, Stebbins, that area across the Yukon Delta, down to Macoriuk and uh, Tuxuk Bay. South of there, just some clouds possibly into the Cusquam Bay area, and should be mostly clear from this Asitna Valley, Western Alaska, Alaska Range, uh, the Cusquam Valley looking pretty good as well, right on down into Bristol Bay and fair skies here over the Alaska Peninsula and the Pribilofs with uh, pretty light easterly winds, wind conditions there. Look for more clouds though over the interior to develop with a chance of some flurries. Uh, looks like mostly setting up uh, possibly the uh, Koyukuk Valley location somewhere in this area, mostly cloudy, maybe a few flurries, otherwise the Tanah Valley, uh, just some variable clouds, winds continue light and uh, that patterned right on down into the North Gulf Coastal areas. Now we have a low there, that same low kind of slipping down to the south, but uh, pulling back some moisture could bring some rain or snow showers in to the Kodiak Island area, possibly up into Kamishak Bay, and possibly the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula. And again, that's about it as far as any, any uh, precipitation goes. Otherwise, dry conditions cook inlet, maybe a le uh, less in the way of clouds than what I have drawn here. But again, overnight low clouds, fog, definitely a possibility both tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night, and even into Monday. And the southeast coast here, still breezy conditions. Uh, small craft advisories uh, all the way down to Stevens Passage and Dixon, or Dixon Entrance. I mean, Clarence Strait there. Uh, looks like about 30 knot winds for Northern Link Canal. So all the clouds, flurries will stay north of the border in Canada there. And then the front out here to the west, still in about the same position there. Although it looks like it's nudged back to the west just a little bit. So that's gonna keep uh, occasional light rain and fog for the central Aleutians here, but definitely losing the gales even in advance of the front here and lighter winds toward the Eastern Aleutians with uh, small craft advisories back to uh, the Attu area. But gale force winds just to the south of Shimia and that area. So we're just going east 30 knots for the forecast on Monday. Otherwise, temperatures this afternoon across the southeast coast looked like this. Uh, up into the mid 40s, 44 at Sitka and 46, I believe that was Elfin Cove. Otherwise, Juneau 37, 37 also at Kloak, 35 Ketchikan. 37 there at Yakutat and mid 30s around the Cordova area. Whittier up to 50 degrees although Seward at 31, and Homer, 34 degrees, Kenai 26, 25 there at Palmer, with Talkeetna stuck at 19, 12 degrees, Gulf Canada, Cobb River Basin, up in the Tanaw Valley, Fairbanks minus six, although Delta up to 11, back down to minus three over at Tanana, and uh, eight below at Fort Yukon. Eagle, 15 below this afternoon, that's the coldest spot in the state. Uh, during the afternoon today, at least at the time these temperatures were plotted. Otherwise, minus five at Bettles, nine at Anatovic, and the Arctic coast either a little above or a little below zero there. Uh, most areas, although Kaktovik up to 13, Cape Lisbon 24, back down to minus two at Kivalina, and then temperature running from eight there at Ambler, 
On over to Daring, zero at Shishmaref, three above for Kotzebue and Nome, four degrees. Coming inland, there's Caltag with two. 12, Unalakleet, 1 degree, McGrath, and single numbers right on down the Kuskokwim and Yukon River Valleys until you get out to the coastline where it's in the mid-teens. 27, Savunga, 21 at Wales. Mid-30s there for the Pribilofs and lower 40s here uh, from False Pass to Unalaska to 43 at Atka and then a couple of 39s on out to the west. For the Alaska Peninsula, uh, mid-30s here, 36 Cold Bay, Sand Point. Cool off to near 30 at uh, Pilot Point, 25 King Salmon and Dillingham. Lows for tonight there, uh, dropping down close to zero around King Salmon, otherwise uh, warming dramatically here on down the peninsula to mid 30s in some areas, upper 30 central Aleutians, and 17 the low for uh, Gamble. Down into the uh, mid minus 20s there for the Yukon Flats area, and uh, even the Arctic coast now finally getting back down below zero for the lows. And teens, single numbers, South Central Alaska, and he's to sit in the valley, mostly in the teens to maybe upper 20s here for the Prince William Sound areas out along the coast, and teens to mid 20s for the Panhandle. Highs down there tomorrow, 30s to uh, near or into the lower 40s once again, and 20s, South Central Alaska, north of the mountains, uh, much chillier, down to uh, Five for the high at Fairbanks, staying below zero for the Yukon Flats and even uh, Arctic Village. Areas of the North Slope look like, looks like they'll stay below zero as well, but the Arctic Coast rising above. 22, the forecast high for Savunga, 35 for St. Paul, otherwise five there in McGrath, 15 for Bethel, 38 Kodiak, and near 40 for portions of the Alaska Peninsula, Atka forecasting a high of 41. Uh, flying weather, good VFR again, most of interior Alaska, and then with that moisture starting to build up with that upper system that's developing and slipping southward, look for some IFR to possibly show up around Point Lay down to Cape Lisbourne. Otherwise, pretty good conditions elsewhere, VFR for the Panhandle. Marginal VFR starting about the Pribilofs, and you have to go way out to the west there to get into some IFR around Shimmy and Attu. And for tomorrow afternoon, uh, we've got a narrow band here, right through here where that uh, stationary front is across the central Aleutians. VFR for the Pribilofs and even back out to the west. And mostly VFR for the Alaska Peninsula, VFR through the interior. And IFR, it looks like along the uh, north slope area, the western north slope. And then south of the crest of the Brooks Range and the mountains up there, VFR, maybe some marginal stuff building here over the uh, northern Seward Peninsula and the Bering Strait, but St. Lawrence Island stays in the clear. This area here staying off the coast, uh, at least through tomorrow into the evening, VFR for all of the Panhandle. Passes all VFR again for the Brooks Range, both uh, Anatovic and Attigan VFR. Ceilings visibility is unlimited for Lake Clark, Merrill, Rainy, Windy, as well as Isabel, Mentasta, Portage, uh, looking good, Tanita VFR. And for Chilkoot and White, uh, continued VFR flying conditions. Freezing levels, again, upper level high, 6,000 feet, but this pattern shifted southward now. The warmest air aloft from uh, south central Alaska, Kodiak Island, back to uh, Bristol Bay. That's the reason the windy areas they're seeing the downslope winds popped up to near 50 again. Could happen again tomorrow if you get the breeze. And then the cooler air with that upper trough coming southward, they're kind of pushing this back down to the south. Icing none across the interior, the Panhandle, the Bering Sea, and just a narrow band out here of the uh, light to very isolated, probably non-existent moderate uh, icing there being the Rhine variety above about 4,000 feet. And a jet stream, 33,000 feet here, big upper level ridge through here, but this little disturbance sneaking around the top there, uh, cut away from the main wind flow here. That's going to be dropping southward and actually kind of enhancing over the next couple of days as it comes southwards. That's why we're bringing the chance of snow into the uh, Yukon Delta on Monday. Otherwise, this northerly jet keeps the winds going at the surface there across the panhandle. The upper level trough staying to the south, and this one staying back to the west. 9,000 feet uh, tomorrow. Northeast winds 15 to 20 or 10 to 15 or mostly around 10 here at 9,000 over the interior, really light winds, Copper River Basin. This week low really not producing any winds at all. You have to get out in the Bering Sea, Easterlies, 25 to maybe as high as 50 knots here over the southern Bering Sea. And uh, the Panhandle, north to northeast, 10 to 20. And for the 3,000 foot winds, 
much the same pattern here north to northeast 10 to 20 knots light here over southern Alaska and then maybe some north to northwest swinging around Kodiak Island of 15 to 20 25 knot northeasterlies there across Selawig Valley and then the strong winds here over the southern Bering Sea back down toward the Aleutians. Turbulence wise, uh, pretty smooth through the interior. Occasional moderate chop from Atco westward to Atu Island. Smooth over southern Alaska and continued occasionally turbulent with the mechanic mechanical stuff here over the panhandle, but nothing too serious at all. And after the break, I'll be back on the marine forecasts. Another area where the Federal Aviation Administration is using technology in advancing aviation safety is in the use of remote weather cameras as a tool to aid pilots in making safe flight decisions. Hello, I'm Sheila Balistrieri. So in 99, we really started what we currently call the Alaska Weather Camera Program. We say Alaska because it's the only place in the FAA that uh, has this. Um, one, it's available through the internet so that the pilots, their family, their friends, they can all take a look at what the weather's like before you go there. In addition, we have all of that available within all of our flight service stations so that each flight service station technician can call up and look at weather real time. And with that, provide a better briefing, whether it's pre-flight or in-flight, for the pilots. Um, by far the most popular thing we've ever done. The weather camera system uh, has been a good one. I'm sure you can tell from the, uh, if you had access to the number of hits that they get that, uh, on each site, that uh, they're well used and uh, they save a lot of gasoline, they save a lot of uh, time for passengers out turning around in weather and coming back when a, when a pilot can just look at the camera and make a decision based on that rather than going out and actually looking at the weather. So when we, uh, uh, look at the cameras, and if it's if it's a definite no-go situation, then we're not able. You know, we don't send an airplane out to take a look at it, and then have to just spend the gas and the time and energy to go out, take a look at, it and just turn around and come back. By placing weather cameras throughout the state, we've certainly come a long way. Today, we have 55 cameras throughout the state, an investment of $7 million. Twelve new sites are scheduled to be up and running by this October. This concept, I think, is stunning in its simplicity. The pilot goes online and can view two images for each location. The first shows what the site would look like in a perfectly clear day situation. The second shows current weather conditions. Pilots can now learn what the visibility is in the mountain pass they face and whether they want to fly through it before they take off. In many instances, they may decide not to fly, to hold on that flight for a while, depending upon what they see. And that's long before they set foot in the aircraft. Alaska is a huge state, and the area covered so far by weather camps is comparatively small. In order for the project to be completed, 165 already identified sites need to be added. In what may be considered counterintuitive, many of these weather cameras are not placed at airports, but are positioned in or near mountain passes and other geographical areas, which are often used by pilots as navigational aids. Others are located at rural airports, where there are no weather observers or co-located with automated weather systems. Pilots report that the value in these weather cameras is the real-time information they receive about destination and route conditions. Flight service specialists also have access to the weather camera images and routinely brief pilots with the most up-to-date information before takeoff and during their flight. We use the weather cams in, in two basic ways uh, here at the, the flight service station for self-briefing, uh, 
to get ready to be able to brief the pilots, uh, to uh, look at the weather cam where, uh, where we have an airport with a weather report. We can compare what we see on the screen with what the weather report says. Where we do not have weather reports available, then we can look at the, at the camera and again get a, get a picture of uh, what the weather is like at those locations. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is pull up the weather cameras to all the destinations in the southeast and, and check that against the, uh, the actual uh, reports at that, at that station and it gives you a lot better uh, picture of what the weather is doing uh, than what we used to enjoy with just the, with just the uh, observation. And I'm, I'm sure all the pilots are doing the same thing. I know all of our pilots do. Uh, a well-placed camera looking in three different directions, there's nothing like that. Be able to see in real time what your weather actually looks like before you take off. Cost benefit is uh, quite a bit. Uh, it started saving us money. Uh, we don't launch a flight when we know that the weather is good and bad. When we can see it on the cameras that the weather is bad at our destination. When the weather cam system was first proposed, there were some people who doubted its uh, utility. And uh, uh, as they've come online, we've, uh, we've seen how the pilots really like to be able to see those pictures. They value it. And uh, as they become available to us as briefers, uh, we value it too. I do thank you also for, for the cameras. I personally have used the cameras. With, I think that probably the one that's most used is the one over going through the pass into Lake Clark. Uh, and. Uh, from time to time I get calls that it may not be functioning properly, which uh, I'm pleased to say Mr. Poe responds to very quickly. During a recent independent study of Alaska pilots who have used the system, 68% reported making decisions to cancel or delay flights based on weather camera information. Pilots also reported that these decisions help them avoid additional fuel costs from flights that must be diverted or repeated due to bad weather. Now these safety and economic advantages generated more than 2.3 million hits this past year on the FAA's Alaska Weather Cam website. Welcome back uh, today's sea ice analysis. Showing up, uh, well, actually some new ice was observed here in the Bristol Bay area, and then some of the uh, areas that thinned out due to the southerly winds, uh, like on the north side of the Seward Peninsula, or right through here, which isn't depicted on this graphic, those started to become uh, covered over more, but the ice still pretty thin. It looks like after tomorrow, we'll start to see an advance of the ice edge back to the west and south. Anyway, marine forecasts, uh, <clears throat> Not too bad here out along the coast. Pretty light in the north coast, east of 15, northeast 30 down south. 20 knot northerlies in the uh, inside waters, 30 knots for Lynn Canal. And then on Monday, small craft advisories east 25 for Clarence Strait, north 25 there for Stevens Passage, and north 30 for Lynn Canal. And 15 to 20 knot winds from the east northeast for the outer coastline with seas only running 4 to 6 feet. And for Prince William Sound, the North Gulf Coast and Northern Cook Inlet, light variable winds tomorrow at 10 knots or less. Uh, light northwesterlies, Kamishak Bay across the Barrens. It looks like a light wind condition there for Kodiak Island. And then for Monday, northeast, 10 to 15 knots, just switching directions here, really not picking up at all. And variable for Northern Cook Inlet, uh, northeast become east of 15 for Kamishak Bay. And now we've got east-southeast winds for the North Gulf Coast, 15 to 20 knots. Bristol Bay, northeast 15, east 20 knots there for the Alaska Peninsula, and then from Castle Cape to Sitkanak, northwest at 15. Then for Monday, light east winds for the Alaska Peninsula, 10 to 15 knots, northeast, light northeast release from Bristol Bay, north 15 knots from uh, Sitkanak to Castle Cape. And for the uh, Fox Islands, southeast 25 knots there tomorrow, and then hit the gales west of Nikolsky, east 35 to 40 there for the Central Aleutians, Adak and Atka, and then 30 knot winds on out to the west. And then for Monday, uh, those winds diminish right through here a little bit, still at about 30 knots, 25 to 30. Small craft advisories nonetheless for the Central Aleutians. And uh, could be a minimum gale out here for the Western Aleutians. Looks like that'll stay to the south, uh, at least through Monday afternoon. 
And then for Sunday here for the uh, Pribilofs East, 30 knots, 25 knot easterlies for St. Matthew Island, otherwise 15 to 20 knots remainder of the areas. And then for Monday, we've got northerlies here from St. Lawrence Island, which uh, tomorrow could be 25 knots and then come down a shade on Monday. But more northerly winds are north of Nunavak Island, northeast 20 coming out of Cuscoan Bay. East winds down to 20 knots now for the Pribilofs. Small craft advisories for the St. Matthew Island area with uh, seas possibly as high as 10 feet. And for the uh, Arctic coast there from the central coast eastward demarcation point, pretty light winds east-northeast at 10 and even light winds from the north here on the west side, 15 knots from Cape Beaufort becoming northwest here across the Chukchi, Chukchi Sea. And then for Monday, north winds picking up a tad here, 20 knots, Wales to Cape Thompson and then still light all out of the northeast uh, for the remainder of the Arctic coast and the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline. And then for tonight, watching this system up here, uh, it shows up a lot better in the upper air, start to increase the clouds with some light snow, but that doesn't look like it'll be a problem through tonight up there, otherwise uh, fair over the interior. A lot of clear skies, light winds, uh, breezy, mostly clear for the panhandle, and this front stuck out there to the west uh, brings a, well actually it's just some leftover moisture through here, but the main rain area back toward Adak and Athka, along with the winds. And then for tomorrow, uh, that band narrows here, still concentrated right over the central Aleutians with the stronger winds. Fair conditions here over the interior again, increasing chances of snow up along the western Arctic coastal areas, which will drop southward tomorrow night. and. Uh, Looks like a much better chance of seeing definitely some clouds, maybe some light snow for the Yukon Delta down to Nunavak Island. Uh, just a guess at this point, uh, but uh, also this is a guess here with the snow showers, rain or snow showers of the uh, Kodiak Island area. Otherwise, not much change elsewhere. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. If you're interested in serving on your local federal subsistence regional advisory council, the deadline to apply is Friday, February 3rd. Email subsistence at fws.gov for more information.